Hello, Dead Battery here, and thank you for joining me on my channel. So this is my Sega Game Gear that I put a lot of modifications in. I put the ceramic capacitors in, I put an LCD screen, and I also put in the rechargeable batteries. All of them I bought on Retro 6. The problem that I'm running into right now is the screen. I believe this is the third screen I've tested. Not too positive on it. But from what I can see, it doesn't quite work right. Now I don't know if I installed it wrong, but I did follow the direction. Nothing against Retro 6. I do buy a lot of stuff from them just to test my skill, but I seem to be having a lot of trouble with this one. So I decided to buy another Sega Game Gear and test it out with the same screen mod and see if I got a different result. This right here is my screen, and see how it flashes? I'm not too sure if this is how it's supposed to go. This is what the modification looks like so far. The LCD screen and the clean screen mod are already in place. I just need to solder in the rest of the pieces. If you put the ceramic capacitors on, everything should line up very well. And surprisingly enough, this one lined up a lot better than mine did. And it's pretty simple. Obviously, everything has a mark so you know where everything needs to go. Even the little areas on the capacitor have little copper trace so you know that that's the side that it needs to connect to. So this little top area I had a lot of difficulty with and unfortunately for the first time when I installed this I kind of melted the ribbon. So here's the other side of the board and as you can see here at the top left there are two chips. So now I'm just going through and actually soldering everything down. This area was very hard to see and unfortunately I don't have a camera for my microscope. I just have a regular microscope. So for me to be able to see, sometimes gets a little harder. Now I tried to zoom it in to get these last little pieces and unfortunately I probably should have done the inside one first because it was definitely more difficult to get the inside one after I'd already soldered on the outside one. So future tip if you decide to do this. 
Also, be really careful because... Did you see that? Yes. I completely bumped off one of the pieces. Luckily, it came off of the soldering iron, so I was able to locate it. I tried to get it into place, but I don't have the best eyesight all the time, so I decided to get my microscope out and line it up. I also wanted to make sure that all the other pieces looked like they were actually soldered down and nothing was missing. I started cleaning up and realized I had forgotten to actually solder in a couple pieces. So let's do that very quickly. There we go. Nice and clean. Next step of this is soldered onto the 9th and the 20th, I believe. Sounds easy enough, but once again, very small parts. Had a little bit of difficulty with this on mine as well, and I was not able to tack it down as well as I'd like to. It took me a lot longer than I'd like to admit. So we'll see how I do with this one. So as you can see here, I folded it over and I taped it down. Now surprisingly enough, there was supposed to be a tack down spot, if you can see it right at the front of the ribbon. Unfortunately, there was nowhere for me to actually tack it down, so I had to tape it. I remembered that I had some really small copper wire, so I thought I'd give it a try and see if that would tack down easier. So this ended up working better than I thought it was going to. I just went with it. My husband really likes the color red and I decided to switch out one of the colored buttons for a red one. Now that all the buttons are in place, I can start putting it together. I did end up getting the speaker wire a little stuck, but it's the original one, so it does have a little bit of a bend in it and does not want to seem to fit underneath. The case is also brand new and I bought that from Retro 6 as well for this same project. Before I got it into place I noticed like mine that the contrast wheel is very tight in its spot and I did not think it was going to work properly. 
In the end, I decided to get my Dremel out and see if I could make that opening a little wider at the top so that the wheel would actually spin properly. After some trial and error, I was able to get the wheel in a good spot where it spun properly and I wasn't rubbing it against the inside of the case. So now I'm going to test it out. I haven't switched over to the rechargeable battery mod because I wanted to test it to see maybe if the battery mod messed up the screen. So I'm going for all my batteries and lo and behold, what a surprise, I do not have enough batteries. How many packs of batteries did we get that other day? Just the one? Double A, cause like I took. I don't know how I'm running out of batteries, but it happens quite often. Ta-da, batteries. Now let's put them into their places. I still feel like the screen is doing a little bit of flickering and I don't know if you can see it very well on camera but it has a red hue to it instead of nothing. is something wrong with the screen and you can kind of see it in this view. See how it's got that little bit that looks like there's still film on it, but I already peeled the film off so I'm not too sure. Can't tell if I damaged the screen or if something's wrong with it or if I also broke this screen somehow in putting it all together. If you know what this could be, please let me know in the comments because I am struggling right now understanding how many screens and modifications for both these game gears I've gone through and I still don't have it right. After a couple of tests of the screen, I did take it apart again. Now on the back here, that connects to the board was very tight, so I did decide to loosen it. However, each of them that I've installed in the game gear always seem to be a little off, a little crooked. I haven't been able to get it to line up where it doesn't look like it's struggling to reach the ribbon cable. Instead, I decided to take it out and try to put it loosely. But I am worried that because of it, I may have damaged the cable. I did run into another issue. As you can see here, 
The sticky part is actually over top the part you need to peel. This is a nice new screen that I got for my husband. I thought it was very retro-esque and I thought he would enjoy it. Unfortunately, this made no difference at all. I was not able to get the screen to turn on and I was still getting that white hue. I did try it a couple times to make sure it kept turning on because once again, I have that trouble with mine. I turn it on, it works. Turn it off. I turn it on again and the screen doesn't work. I turn it off, turn it on again, and it works. Once again, I'm not too sure if this has to do with something I did, if something's not soldered right, or if the rechargeable batteries are not made for this modification. I'm still struggling to figure out why I have that white hue or that look that looks like plastic. I'm assuming somewhere in the process I must have damaged the screen. If you have any suggestions on what I could have done or something I could do differently, please let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and share with your friends.